Hey guys, we're going to look at square roots today, and uh, let's look at the definition first of what a square root is. It's basically, you know, when you say square root, it is a number that times itself gives you the number underneath that radical. And you can, I, talking about memorizing squares 1 through 20, I would, I would look at those and just make sure you, at least you should know your 1 through 12. Um, 13 through 20, probably you could start with 20, you go 20 squared is 400, and so on, and then work backwards, but not that terribly big of a deal, but it might help a little bit to work with some of these problems unless you use a calculator, which I would avoid mostly, but you will need one today, so if you want to pause it uh, and grab one really quickly, go ahead and do that. But look at this list here of uh, uh, problems, and really, uh, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, if you were to do this in a calculator, you would find out that the answer is 2. The square root of C times the square root of C, well, Anything times itself with that radical, under, with, underneath that radical, you're just going to get the same thing. So you don't even have to, have to know things like the square root of 7.38 and work that in, and then times it by itself. You, you don't need to walk, bother with it. Look at those two square root problems. I mean, those two square root numbers under the square roots. The answer will be 7.38 by definition. <clears throat> the answer to the last one would be what? Y plus 5. Okay, you're just multiplying those together and taking the square root of those things, okay? Uh, let's do a couple of examples. Go ahead and get your calculator out, and you're going to figure out the square root of 18 to five decimal places very quickly first. You should, when you, somebody says to you, oh, the square root of 18, how much is that? You don't have to go, oh, I don't know, oh, I can't do this, oh, I don't know. Okay, I mean, you, you can make a decent guess, right? I mean, what's the square root of, you know, 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3, <clears throat> the square root of 16 is 4. So you can go, wait a minute, the square root of 16 is 4, so that's eh, a little more, let me try, try this, oh, the square root of 25, that's 5. Well, eight, the square root of 18 goes somewhere in between there, it's closer to the 16, so it'd probably be, you know, 4 point something or whatever, so, and go ahead in your calculator and go ahead and push the square root of 18 and see what you get. I'll use my online calculator here, if I can find the button. Well, I can't find the button, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> well, okay, anyway, I'm probably looking right at you. You're probably, you're probably screaming at me right now, going, it's right there, you stupid. No, anyway, the square root of 18 is a little more than four, four point something or whatever, okay. But note, if you look at your decimals, um, you're going, I don't really see a pattern here. You can even turn your calculator, if it's on your phone, turn your calculator sideways so you can get more decimals. And they won't repeat, because remember last time in our um, you know, types of numbers, we determined that, <coughs> excuse me, pi and the square root of anything that doesn't work out to an integer is a type of irrational number, which means the decimals won't repeat. All right, uh, use a calculator to determine the two square roots of 10 to six decimal places. Okay, well, <coughs> same thing, and the square root of 10, okay? Well, I'm gonna do this on my phone this time. And the two square roots you might be asking, what in the world does that mean? Well, <clears throat> here's what I mean. Let's do it first. What is the square root of 10? <clears throat> the square root of 10 is approximately 3.16228. Okay, we'll just do it to five then, I guess, okay. In other words, that's one of the answers because if you multiply this by itself, in other words, you square it, you're going to get 10, approximately. All right, <clears throat> the other answer to this is this. You can actually put a negative in front of that because if you multiply a negative times itself, that means you're going to have a negative times a negative, which will give you a positive. But generally, what is used, let's say, if somebody says, oh, what's the square root of you know, 25? Generally, in math and in algebra, you're going to just say, well, the answer is 5. That's, that's how that's uh, expressed, okay? Um, we'll come more to that when it, when it comes up in this class. So, uh, but without even using a calculator, let's do this. Determine between what two consecutive integers these numbers lie. In other words, you know what an integer is, okay? That's, you know, dot, 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 and negative 3. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and, and so on. That's the set notation for integers. All right? 
knowing your square roots, which you need to know, um, or even numbers times themselves, what two numbers or two integers does the square root of 10 fall between? You would go, well, the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 16 is 4. So, you know, the square root of 10 would fall between, you know, in other words, the square root of 9 and the square root of 16, which these two numbers are. So the square root of 10 falls between those two. You would just put, you know, between 3 and 4. And then those are integers. Okay, how about this one? The square root of 38. Between what two integers does the square root of 38 fall between? This is where you go, okay, 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 5, 25. 6 times 6, 36. 7 times 7, 30, or excuse me, 49. You go, oh wait, there it is. Okay, so the square root of 36, and then between that is the square root of 38, which that is. <clears throat> and then you have the square root of 49. Of course, we know the answer to the square root of 36, that's a 3, is 6. And the square root of 49 is 7. So the answer is the square root of 38 falls somewhere between uh, 6 and 7. But closer to 6 because 38 is closer to 36 than 38 is closer to 49. All right, here's another one. The square root of 76. What two integers does the answer to that fall between? I'll let you think about that for a second. Okay, well... You should have gone something like, well, let's gotta keep going here. Seven times seven, 49. Uh, eight times eight, 64. Okay, so let's see, I got the square root of 64. And then let's see, nine times nine is 81. So wait, the square root of 81, that's it. So in other words, the square root of 76 falls here between the square root of 64, which is eight, and the square root of 81, which is nine. So this falls between eight and nine. And that's all there is for this. Okay, let's go to higher order roots. Let's talk about cube roots and fourth roots and notation and all that jazz. Um, this, let's say you have the square root of, I don't know, uh, nine. Okay, there is understood to be a two right there. They don't bother to write it because that's, they'll, they just call that notation a square root. You don't need to write a two because everybody who sees one of those knows that you're looking for a number which is multiplied by itself twice, gives you that number. So the answer to that is 3. Of course, you can just write it like this. It's the same exact thing. If you want to find a cube root, you are going to have a 3 where that 2 is. In other words, let's say you have the cube root of 8. This time you're going to write a 3 there because we need to know. If we don't see anything written there, we just assume it's a 2, and then we want to know the square root of 8. Now we have the cube root of 8. Well, just like... The cube, uh, excuse me, the square root of nine means, oh, three times itself twice gives you nine. We're looking for some number, something times something times something, that will give you eight as an answer. And these aren't too hard to figure out. You don't have to memorize them all. You just have to go through the, uh, the natural numbers, one, two, three, four, and so on, to find out which one of those works. Well, you can try one. One times one times one, one, not eight. 2 times 2 times 2, you go, wait a minute, 2 times 2, 4 times, that's it, okay. So you would say the cube root of 8 is 2, all right, and there you go. And you, you might have the fourth root of some number, okay. In other words, you'd be doing the same thing. Let's say it's the fourth root of 81, okay. You'd go, okay, well, I need to find out some number, some number times itself, times itself, times itself gives you 81, okay. And you can just start with 1. A one won't work, obviously. Two, let's try it. Well, you, you could already count this thing out because it's an odd number. No even number times itself four times is going to give you an odd number. Okay, but let's try three. We have three, 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 and three. Well, if you get these together, that's nine. Get those together, that's nine. Nine times nine, 81, yes. So the answer to this is three. There you go. All right, that's how you note that, okay? Uh, without using the calculator, determine the following, okay? Uh, of course, we already did. Let's just let's go together. Number one, number one, we already did that one, okay? The cube root of eight. In other words, make sure you understand what this means is something times something times something three times will give you eight, and we know the answer is two because we did it just a minute ago, okay? We actually <laughs> just did the next one uh, a few minutes ago as well. Here, here's a question for you. Well, forget this. We'll call this the fourth root of 16, all right, there you go. So write that on your piece of paper. 
pause this, pause this and try to figure out the fourth root of 16. So pause. Okay, well, the fourth root of 16 means that something times something times something times something is 16. Well, just start at your whole, your natural numbers. Excuse me, not whole numbers, try natural, your counting numbers, okay? Uh, well, one doesn't work. One times one times one times one is still one. All right, let's try two. Two times two times two times two. Well, you can go, that's four, that's eight, that's 16. Oop, that works. So the answer to this is two, okay? Now, here's where it gets kind of funky. Look at this third one. The cube root of negative 27. Now, again, just break down what this means in your head. What does it mean, the cube root of 27? That means you got something times something times something gives you negative 27. Okay. Probably you should realize <clears throat> that the answer to this is going to be negative. Because if you get a positive times a positive times a positive, which they all, they all can be the same thing, that's not going to give you a negative number. Okay. It's really going to be positive. So this has to be negative. The, whatever this is has to be a negative because a negative times a negative is a positive, then a positive times a negative is the negative. There it is, okay? So we can try negative one, you know it's not gonna work, okay? Two, I mean, they're all even numbers, I'm not gonna give you an odd number. We'll try negative three. There we go. Well, negative three times negative three is positive nine, right? Positive 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. So there is your answer. That is what you're going to write as your answer. Okay. All right. Take a look at this. Two answers and two ways to write two, an uh, excuse me, two answers and ways to write two answers to this equation. Okay. Well, x squared is equal to 4. Go ahead and pause it really quickly and uh, write that. Okay. Well, what you're going to do is you're trying to find out some number right here. What number squared will give you a 4? In other words, a positive 4. And obviously the answer is 2, right? Okay, but don't forget, there's also another answer that if you, if there's, a, there's a number that if you square this, in other words, if you multiply this number by itself, it will also give you a positive 4. And the answer is negative 2, because negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Okay, all right? Let's do an example of this. And this is what they're gonna do. String together some kind of an expression where you mess with these roots and you put it in some kind of, a, again, an expression like this. So take a second, copy this down, pause it. <coughs> Me too. All right, and let's take a look at this. Remember on these types here where the negative is just kind of hanging off the end? Let it hang off the end for a second and then let's take care of this first, all right? Well, the answer to this, two squared is four. Okay, so we're asking for the opposite of 2 squared, which is negative 4. Plus, <clears throat> and let's take care of this part first, negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9, right? So let's just write a 9 there, all right? Now, plus or minus the square root of 4? Blah. Okay, that's weird. What this means is, is that we are going to have two answers. And this is just a kind of a handy way of writing that the, that the answer here has to be a positive and it also has to be a negative. Well, you tell me what's the square root of four? Two, right? Okay, so here we go. In other words, we have, we're gonna have two answers. Our first answer is going to be negative four plus nine plus two, that's one. The other one is gonna be negative four plus nine minus two. So that's gonna be five plus two or seven and this will be five minus two or three. So you have two answers. Only thing you need to worry about is making sure you get this one straight, make sure that a negative gets applied to the end, and making sure that you go ahead and if it's plus or minus, make two answers out of it. Okay. All right, let's try to practice it. Go ahead and pause it, and uh, we'll come together and do that in one second. Okay, A. That's what we got for A. If it's four decimals, it's 4.1231. For the square root of 17. All right, go ahead and uh, try B. And we'll come back. Okay, the B is the square root of 27. We know that the square root of 25 is 5, and then the square root of 27 is here, and then the next square would be the square root of 36. That's going to be 6. So the answer will be, will be it's somewhere between 5 and 6. All right, pause it and try C. 
Okay, C will be negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 27. That's written the cube root of negative 27. Okay, try D. Pause it. Okay, well, the square root of 81 is 9. Minus the square root of 144 is 12. So 9 minus 12 is also negative 3. All right? Okay, pause it and try E. Okay, E should have gotten two answers, 0 and 6, and here's how. Uh, you have the opposite of 1 squared, which is negative 1. You have plus 2. Excuse me, that should be 4. And then plus or minus the square root of 9. Well, that's 3. So you're going to have plus 3, and you're already going to have negative 1 plus 4 minus 3. So negative 1 plus 4 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. There's your 0. There's your 6. Okay. You guys have a great day. See you next time.